What's up everybody, Tweets here. Um, in this video, I am gonna show you an updated version how to make static map items like signs um, or static items in general. Um, now this, I did a while back with a billboard, um, but some things I missed on that. Um, it was a while ago. So I'm just updating, giving the correct and full process to it. It's very simple. So pretty much like anything else that I've showed you in the past, um, you create your folder in your P drive. Inside you go data. And then you add your textures and then your RV mats. So I just added my normals and my metallics, so no HTUs and SMDIs. And then I just gave it the paths on stage one and five. Like I told you in the past, um, stage one being normal, no HTU, and stage five being metallic, SMDI. And that was it. And I did that for all three of mine because this model has three textures for each part. So once that's done, now we can um, now we can start working on the model. So now we're going to bring up our DayZ tools and we're going to go with Object Builder. And we are going to import our model and FBX. So I am going to scale it to 0 0.01 to begin with. And now we'll see that it's split up the multiple sections. So what we're going to want to do is figure out which part, luckily this model has the, um, textures referenced in RV. So all we really have to do is figure out which part goes which. So for the main sign part, <coughs> I'll see that it has ZNAC. So what I'll do is I will grab my texture from my mod thing folder, give it the ZNAT CO and the ZNAT RV mat apply. Now with that still selected, I'm going to go and create a new and I'm just going to call it TMO. Yeah, I'll just do color. Color one. Okay, so there's that. Now I want to see and make sure if these little metal pieces are separated. So I'll hit E on them. All right, so that is crapling. I can't pronounce these words, by the way. <laughs> And now I'm just going to check and see what these are. Tubes. All right. So we'll just select just those metal parts. Now it could be different on any model you use. And some might only have one texture. So you won't have to go through all this. But um, so what I'm doing to do, multi I'm holding left control, by the way. And I'm just selecting the parts. And then I'll create a new, call it color two. And then these tubes will be last. Now you see there's three dots. So that means these parts here could be separate which is the same as these metal pieces. So all you got to do is just select color two or whatever you used just for those parts, hold left control and just re add and start adding the other parts that use the same texture. Just like that while holding left control, I'm also right clicking color two, redefining and now I clicked off color one, you'll see the sign, color two, you'll see all that selected. And there we go. And now just these poles. And then that will be, if we go in here, tubes. And then I'm going to give it color three. 
All right, there we go. Now you'll see that all our textures are applied, our RV mats are applied. We're not going to need any more of these defaults, so I can get rid of those just by right clicking and hitting delete, selecting them all. Now that we have that done, our model is now textures, textured. We have our hidden selections. So now I am going to bring up my bulldozer. Okay, so now we got our bulldozer up. We can see that our model is good. It's textured. It's got material. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to size it. So I'm going to create a proxy from one of the vanilla signs so we can use it as a reference. And since this is like their street signs, I'm going to go to size it to one of their street signs. So I'm going to go browse. <coughs> You're going to go to your P drive, DZ structures, signs, settlements, and then you can pick any of these, end or start, either one. Let's go with below to start, it's fine. Hit OK, and now you'll see their sign. So now what we're gonna wanna do is select our selection so our whole model is selected, and start moving our model into position and size in it so it looks about their size. Now we can hit it. We want it lined up with theirs. Now I'm moving it by holding right click, by the way. So I want to get it close. Pretty much personal preference, really, of what you want your uh, model to be sized at or how big you want it. But if you're trying to get very close to what they have, then do it that way. Now, I can see that theirs are a little different. This is more wider than what they have. So what you could do also is if you just select the brackets, which is or 2, and then the poles, you can move them, but you're going to want to do separately. So what you would do is select just one at a time, but without selecting the actual sign part. And then you would just drag it until you get it in position where you'd want it. And that one is pretty, pretty close. And then you would do the same for this one. Make sure you have the whole thing selected. Which I missed that little piece. There we go. And then do the same. And just keep all tabbing to your bulldozer. And now you'll see that that's pretty close. And then you could just grab, well, we missed a little piece here. So what I'll do is I'll move that. Underneath. Get that lined up. About like right there. All right, so now what you can do is select surfaces, uh, just below surfaces, you can select vertices and just get the bottom portion of the model and drag it down. And then you can make it longer. Until you've got Similar. So if you're trying to make something the same, so it looks almost the same. There you go. And then you can, once you have that, just click on your proxy, hit delete, right click it, hit delete, and that gets rid of the proxy. So now you're left with a sign 
that's very similar in size and shape to the vanilla road signs. Now, the it, material, it looks a little off, but that's because Bulldozer sometimes buds out. It'll look a little different in game. So now we have that done. Now we're going to create new LOD properties, and we're going to give it a geometry. So I'm going to do is I'm going to create boxes around it. Now, I don't know why I did that, but we'll get it fixed. There we go. Good enough. All right, now we're going to create one around the top part, so the actual sign. And we want to get it lined up with the model. Just like that. Just like that. And now we're going to do the same for the posts. So we're going to create another box, not a plane, not a circle, because I'm clicky. There we go. And now we're going to do the same and just get the poles. And get that right around it. About like that. Now we can just copy that one and move it over to the next. Just like that. All right, now we have those done. Select all your boxes, go to stretcher, topology, find components, and then in your property names, you're gonna right click, go new, and make auto center. Value zero. And now your geometry is done. Now we're going to create the same things, but this time we're going to do a view geometry. And we're just going to copy these three components. Paste it. Now create another new properties, fire geometry. And now inside the fire geometry, you're going to want to hit so make sure you have your boxes selected. Hit E. Go to Material. We're going to get a Penetration Army Mat. So P. D Z. Data. Data. Penetration. And you're going to want something around the same material. So this is a street sign. It's metal. So I'm just going to go with metal plate. And then apply. <clears throat> so now we have that. Now I'm going to give it a memory. And then I'm going to put my boxes in that memory. I always like to delete the components out of there just so the boxes are still there. And then we're going to give it memory points by putting our mouse where we want it. So for bounded box min, I'm going to go to the top left corner here click hit insert on our keyboard bring it down here on the top side down here top right here in this little corner create a new bound in box min enter and then we're going to go down here in this bottom corner hit insert Get it lined up a little bit, uh, like right here, and bound in bots, mats, 
center. I'm just going to hit that. Hit that centered on. New. And we're just going to call CE underscore center. And then we're going to do the same thing. Insert in the center. Drag that out. Now we're going to call that in view. New. I N V V I E W. And then there we go. Don't need that in view out too, too far. All right. Now that may be for regular items. You might not need to do the in view um, for static items, but it's just, I'm a creature of habit. So now you're going to want res lods. Um, I do show how to do that in my weapon tutorial. So I will refer you to that video. Res lods are definitely needed and they are good for distance and your item. Um, you're not going to want to just take the same LOD, your main 0, 0.0 LOD, and duplicate it. Otherwise, you're just going to have it too sharp quality, so it's just not as good for performance-wise. You're going to want each LOD further on to be a little lower quality than the first one. But I do show how to do that in my weapon tutorial. So, but once you get all that done, you just save your model. Bring it to our folder. Sample sign. And there we go. Now we have our model done. Now we want to get a model.cfg. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up material tools, eliteness. Now, for any static item, you're going to want just a generic basic model.cfg. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to gear. Um, you could use theirs, but they don't have, if you look up their signs, they don't have a model.cfg. It's just got the RV mat on there. So what I would do is I'll just go to gear, tools. Bring open a basic model, copy that, model.cfg, bring up my notepad, paste it. I always like to get rid of these little things here. Make sure you have your hidden selections in order, so color one, comma, color comma and color three just like that and then get your sign p3d name just like that save it as all files for the type model dot cfg Done. Now that's that. Now for a config, what you're going to want to do, we could close all this, is just go to your P drive, DZ, go to structures, go to residential, or no, nah, just go to signs. It'll be fine. Bring up that config right there. We're going to take the top half portion right here from line 15 up so you get the CFG vehicles class in that little bracket create a new oh, I didn't copy it copy that paste now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take just this little portion here And then we're going to just change some things over. So I'm going to change this land billboard base to house no destruct. You're always, for static items, you're going to want house no destruct. And the top class also, you're going to need a on the top because it's the first 
of your custom based off that. After that, if you do retextures, you only need the top part once for the base class. After that, you can just copy this portion, change your class name and your model path or texture path or whatever, and that's it. You don't need to do with the top one multiple times, just that one time. <coughs> All right. So now that we have that part done, now we're going to get a go back and we're going to want scope equals one on our model. So it actually shows up in game. Um, one will be for all static items. Scope two will be for everything else like clothing, guns, containers. Um, if you don't do scope one, if you do scope two, it will not show up in your, um, if you use VPP admin tools, object builder part, it won't show up in there and it won't show up in editor. So use scope one. Now that we have that done, now it's just our path to our model. So go into the sign in our P drive, our custom folder, get our path. And then we're going to change the model path and our texture path. So grab our model name and our textures. So we have three. So we're going to go in order. So you want to make sure you go in the same order you did on the um, model. So color one, I did Z NAC. So there we go. And then we're going to just copy, put a comma here after that. Copy that a couple more times, paste it comma, paste it, no comma on the last. Then camo color two, I did crept lane. And then color three was the tubes, the poles. Just like that. Now, you're also going to want to have hidden selections itself. Just like that. Hidden selections equals and then color one. Just like how you have it in your model.cfg. And color three. Boom. Just like that. And then that's it for the trend fade. Now, if you're going to do a, a retextured version of this, you're just going to copy it, paste it, change your class name to a different class name, and then path to your new textures. That's it. But we're not doing multiple textures right now. We're just doing one. Close it off. Change your class name. So I'm just going to do sample sign and then add that class name. So I'm gonna take this top class name, which was from the vanilla signs, and I'm just gonna add that under easy data, uh, required add-ons, just underneath the DZ data here, because this is a sign that we're making. And then I'm gonna take my class name and replace it. So there we go. So now we have the vanilla class DZ structures, signs in our required add-ons, and then our class name is now the same as our project. And then that's it. So now we have it config. So we save it as, go into our folder, C++, config, boom, done. And there you have it. That's a texture. That's all textured now. And it's all config. So the model's all done. The mod should be done. So now what we do is we bring up our PBL project. Get our folder that is selected. I always like to make a habit of going into my P drive before I pack and delete any the temp folder. Every time. Bring back that. And crunch it. We wait.
I removed the sounds, so I don't have any sounds popping up, but once it pats, it's done. And then we do a test. Okay, now that we are in game, yes, my character is naked. Well, kind of. Alright, so now what you're going to do, put on your admin tools, go up to Object Builder, type in your class name, sample, sign, shows up. But first, you're going to have to create a build set, so I'll create one. Now you can do this in Editor as well, you can test it since it's just a item like a map item static all right so now let me create we got that now we grab our sign bring it in put it somewhere in place rotate it whatever go as low or high whatever you want save it and then exit those and then boom you'll see that it's solid Looks good, in place, and then that's it. And you have a solid object. And it is mint. So, that's it. It's pretty easy. These static items like this, very easy. You can do this with signs, other types of decorations. It's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. But yeah, that's it. Um, the link to the file from the video will be in description below you can get the raw files from that use them as you wish use it to work from or just use the same model it's fine and I will also link the link to the model the actual model on sketchfab with credits to the modeler of course other than that thanks for watching if you have any questions join my discord which is also linked below until the next one thank you